And now, a bit of poetry from the Jacksonville, Florida, legendary poet, William Frederick Durst. <clears throat> it's just one of those days when you don't want to wake up. Everything is fucked. Everybody sucks. You don't really know why, but you want to justify ripping someone's head off. No human contact, and if you interact, your life is on contract. Your best bet is to stay away, motherfucker. It's just one of those days. So, short story, it's been one of those days for the last uh, couple of weeks. Not bad, actually, just busy. Just crazy, crazy busy. And um, I'm kind of over it. Kind of ready to be done with the busy. The weather has been nice. A little bit rainy. A little bit uh, stormy. It actually was a little thundery here just a few moments ago. And then it drizzled for about 13 seconds. And now I'm sad because there was no more. And I like to get wet. And not, you know, in the PCP way that some people know from training day. Thank you, Denzel, for a remarkable performance. But in the, you know, rain type of way. Yet, here I sit inside, doing the thing, and I noticed that uh, I plugged my interface into a different USB port on my computer, and now it is super, 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 super sensitive. It's like, I don't know, it's providing extra power to the microphone. So when I said power, it peaked. So that's cool. So I'm going to fix that in post. I don't like that at all. It makes me have to talk just a little bit differently. Um... Maybe even provide a little more space. I am currently talking at a uh, pretty quiet volume for my normal my normal speaking tone for when I do the podcast. It's very weird. I don't know how to react right now. Um, it's also picking up a lot more room noise because people's air conditioners are on outside. And uh, after I'm done with this, I'll probably turn mine on unless it's raining, which I doubt it is. Uh, then I'll open up a window again. Um, anyway, I've missed you. I've missed you guys so much. I've been fucking crazy busy. So I'm glad I'm able to force myself to make time to record this. I was going to get very, very, very serious for this episode. And, you know, whole existential crisis and all that good fun. Because I posted on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, um, two weeks ago, I think it was, that I really didn't know what to talk about. And, uh... You people had suggestions, and I liked pretty much all of those suggestions. But one suggestion stood out to me the most, and that was to get very philosophical. And um, I almost went that direction. I was going to, I was going to go that direction and uh, get philosophical and go down the whole why are we here debate and talk about, uh, you know, I've got some friends I got friends from all walks of life. Some are very, very, very religious in their various religious uh, sleeves. And others, like myself, are not. Um, spiritual, maybe, but not really uh, subscribing, if you will, to a belief system. And that was my original plan. I was going to try and knock that out uh, for an episode to come out last week, and that just did not happen. So... That's penciled in for a future episode, so keep your ears peeled for that one because I'm still going to do it. It's going to be amazing, and you're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. Either way, I hope you let me know because I like to whisper. Anyway, it is Tuesday. It's a day after I normally like to put the podcast out to begin with. I wanted to record yesterday, but uh, ended up working uh, yesterday was Memorial Day, um, so if you had a good Memorial Day weekend, I hope you did. I was going to say thank you, but I didn't have anything to do with it. Um, I had a great Memorial Day weekend, and I'd like to thank anybody who is still serving in the military, armed forces, or has served. You know, Memorial Day is not necessarily for the living veterans and living current military, but um, I don't personally know anybody who was KIA or any of that. So can't directly thank them, but I am thankful for 
for those who have given all the ultimate sacrifice. Um, you know, you, you, you see the, the things about uh, we get our three-day weekend. Well, that's, you know, that wasn't for not. That wasn't just because we needed a three-day weekend, you know. Um, that was celebrating people laying down their lives for for the cause. Um, whether or not you agree with the reasons behind the cause in the first place, which I don't necessarily do for a lot of it, because there's, let's be honest, you can't just say you're anti-war. Yeah, I mean, you can say you're anti-war, but being, um, <clears throat> I don't know how to put this, being anti-all war um, isn't helpful at all, because sometimes, sometimes shit has to go down. That's just a fact of life. Always has been. And if you're not going to be one of the people who go do the fighting, you know, at least support those who do. Um, I don't necessarily agree with all of the conflicts that we've been involved in, the reasons behind them, uh, but that doesn't mean I don't support the people actually having to go do the work because, you know, they believe in a higher purpose. And as long as that higher purpose isn't just completely fucked up, because let's be honest, sometimes for people it is. Um, yeah, without without them doing that, we probably wouldn't have a lot of the things, a lot of the luxuries we do. So uh, since Memorial Day weekend and Memorial Day uh, was yesterday, thank all of you who are still around, who are serving or have served. I know a lot of people in the military and prior military. Um yeah, so thank you. Thank anybody you know who did give the ultimate sacrifice. Does not go unnoticed by me. This episode's probably going to be pretty quick because uh, my mouth is really, really, really dry. And I have a headache. So I'm going to try and knock this out rather quickly. I had some stuff I wanted to talk about. But mostly I wanted to just say, you know, I am not the biggest fan of the drama that comes with relationships. People that know me know this. I am both a hopeless romantic and a crazy-ass cynic all at the same time. And I try to stifle the hopeless romantic part of me. Um, much to my chagrin, like it doesn't work out favorably a lot of the time. But I give it the old college try. Mostly to help keep my ass out of uh, bad scenarios. And from looking like a fool more often than I need to. That's the whole purpose for that. But... Uh, the cynic thing is I just watch. I'm a people watcher. And I've seen a lot of relationships go south for, you know, sometimes completely legit reasons and a lot of times for really, really dumb reasons. And I've been involved in not a lot of relationships, but a few. And uh, my tolerance for bullshit is practically nothing. And drama also practically nothing when it's actually involving me. Not a fan. So... Anyway, my relationship ended, some of you know, and that's that's okay. I'm not going to get into the reasonings behind it. Um, so it's hard for me sometimes to support people who make the decisions to get married. Um, not all the time. Like, I'm happy for them. I, I'm happy for them when I've actually been around them, and I support that decision. I can see. I can see the happiness that they bring to each other and to themselves, um, and that's what this last weekend was really all about for me. I was able to go celebrate with a lovely young couple, Katie and Sean. Um, Katie's family sort of kind of adopted me a few years back, went on a Vegas trip with a couple of co-workers, Chris and Jamie invited me. Their whole family likes to go to Vegas for, um, their, you know, when they're, anybody in their family turns 21, they turn it into a giant family trip to Vegas and, my family is not big, and theirs is huge. And my family, uh, I don't think even our small portions of our family could really stand each other long enough to survive a trip like that uh, frequently. And theirs is a whole big menagerie of people. Like, there were 26 people, and I think that was either before me or including me. I can't remember. And, uh, it was, it was nuts. It was a really, really good time. Well, they kind of adopted me. So Katie is, uh, uh, Jamie's sister 
and Jamie and I used to be in dispatch together. She was one of my trainers, one of my closer friends. She and I have been through a lot together just as dispatchers and humans. She's been there for me when I needed a shoulder to cry on and, and likewise. And, um, so anyway, Katie and Sean, they met a few years ago and, uh, I've met Sean just, you know, they, her family had would start inviting me to family functions and that was cool. And it was interesting to see a big family for one, just a huge extended family. They would do all kinds of stuff. Like there's Thanksgiving and then there's the day after Thanksgiving when they're all back at somebody's house eating leftovers. And it's, it's weird, like in the, in a good way to see just a family of that magnitude, that size get along as well as they do. Granted, I don't get to see all the inner workings of all of their interactions. I'm not part of their family group messages or any of that. And that's okay. I don't need to be. But it's just cool as somebody who came from a small, you know, it was basically me, my sister, and my mom, and then my dad and his parents and my mom and her side of the family. And it's uh, both sides were a little more dysfunctional than they needed to be from time to time. But it's it's nice to see just such a big family do big family things and not everybody walks out of there being pissed off and upset and so that's always been interesting so I appreciate so they invited me to their wedding and they got married up in Keystone Colorado and for somebody who has spent their whole life living in Colorado I have spent very infrequent uh very few I haven't spent a lot of time in the mountains. Um, I've done some camping here and there every couple of years, and it's actually been a long time since I've gone camping, since 2013. Um, but as, as an adult, I haven't really done a whole lot of mountain anything. I don't ski. I don't snowboard. Um, I don't hike. I don't climb mountains. My fat ass would die. So getting up into the mountains for really anything is... Uh, it just doesn't happen very often. The closest I come is... You know, we go to Telluride for the film festival. We go, used to go to Estes Park for uh, the Stanley Film Festival when I was up in Estes Park at the Stanley Hotel. And that was kind of it. And occasionally random drives through the mountains in my little GTI because it's a kick-ass car and it likes driving in the mountains. Well, Katie and Sean are awesome. So I've, I've spent some time with them. Granted, it was in the big family dynamic, but... I got to interact with them and watch them. And like I said, I'm a people watcher and I, I like to watch people interact with each other and see, um, body language. And I'm, I'm pretty good at reading people. And when I found out they were getting married, I'm like, well, duh, you know, I, I was pretty confident that was going to happen just after my first few interactions with them together and then talking to Jamie and I knew it was going to come. It was just a matter of time. So when they invited me, I was like, hell yeah. If I can make it, I will. Well, they were supposed to do it last year, but then, you know, everything happened. 2020, stupid 2020. They still ended up getting married, just having their own little, uh, I don't know if they did it at the, the courthouse or whatever. I don't remember what the details were on that, but they finally got around to having the reception. And luckily the CDC came out with its mask updates and then the state did its thing. And then Summit County said, hey, you know, fuck it. You don't have to. Unless you want to, which would be weird. Um, so it actually worked out really, really favorably. And they had a big wedding party. You know, Katie's dress looked amazing. Sean looked amazing. Family was good. Everybody was good. It was it was a really good time. And it was up there in the mountains. And I said, fuck it. It's a Memorial Day weekend. I'm just going to make the whole weekend out of it. Went up Friday night after work, Friday afternoon. Uh, wedding was, they had drinks, like a, almost called it a pregame. But pre-ceremony shenanigans Friday. I'm sure they had the wedding rehearsal dinner that night. And then they had the drinks um, after. But showed up for the drinks. And then the next day was wedding prep. And then the next, you know, Saturday night was the wedding. And the wedding was fucking cool. Like, you had to take a gondola from the uh, little resort village down where everybody stays. You take two gondola rides, actually. Up one station, get off, wait, go to the other gondola and take another one. I don't know what the distance was, but it was about a half hour gondola ride and it was kick ass views. My stupid ass didn't think to take any pictures or get video of it because I am dumb. So that was a bummer. 
but that was cool. You know, that's the first time I've ever had to take a gondola to a wedding. Um, only time I ever ride gondolas is when I'm down in Telluride. And, uh, you know, gondolas are fun as long as you're not terribly afraid of heights. Some people are. Get them on a gondola and they freak out just a little bit. But it's still fun. Um, watching them suffer a little bit is also fun. Just going to say it. So we get to the wedding. They do the the whole wedding ceremony. Her dad actually officiated it. And he is a uh, retired police officer. He was a chief of police for um, fairly large police. Well, fairly small police agency. But he used to work for Aurora Police a long time ago. And very well known, very well spoken. One of the coolest guys I've ever known. And I'm not going to lie. And I told him this directly that he should strongly consider being a wedding officiant, officiator, officiant. He should just consider doing weddings as his little uh, side hustle in his retirement. Um, I don't know if he needs any new hobbies. Something tells me he's not a man with a lot of downtime. In his retirement, he probably very easily finds things to do outside of just relaxing in his retirement. But he was so natural with it, and he's always been charismatic. Um, he knows how to work an audience, and he's comfortable. And granted, this is you know family and friends, and mostly people that he knows, and uh, that shouldn't be surprising that you're comfortable presenting to them. But something tells me he would do a okay in a room with 150 strangers and uh he was really i've done five weddings myself and i get nervous every time regardless of how well i know the people there because unlike being in a band and screaming at people you know i'm generally not hammered when i do those weddings not even tipsy so and maybe he was i don't know i doubt it but um he did a really good job and it was just a really good ceremony a little more religious than you know what i do but that's just because i'm not religious but their family is and as far as ceremonies with prayers and stuff go you know it was good it was it was really good um like i said every everybody you know looked amazing bridesmaids were beautiful groomsmen were handsome devils in their tuxedos and you know we had a couple people the the way it was on the mountain the chairs were kind of leaning forward and we lost a uh I don't know what you call it. It's basically a giant uh, pedestal, and uh, they had a flower arrangement sitting on it, and that got knocked over, but quickly remedied. And then uh, one of the family members, um, she was in a wheelchair, and the brakes kind of gave out, and she almost tried to roll down the mountain, but she was quickly identified as in motion, and that stopped. She wouldn't have made it very far. She was sitting right behind me, and either I would have stopped her or we would have just snowballed and taken out everybody else that was sitting in front of us because we were at the back and it would have been bad, but that didn't happen. So, you know, tra tragedy, tragedy averted, but it was a really good wedding. And then the after party, um, yeah, that got crazy. I don't know if you call it an after party. It was a wedding. What do you call it? The reception. That's what it is. The reception was a fantastic time. I don't think I've been to very many weddings where that many people actively started dancing as quickly as these people did. Um, usually it's, you know, you do the dinner and the toasts and the cutting of the cake and blah, 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 blah. Husband, wife dance, daddy, daughter dance, mom, groom dance. And then occasionally you start to get people sort of trickling to the dance floor but literally after all those those prerequisite dances and stuff happened it was like uh the dj did his little thing and then boom the dance floor was packed and this wasn't a big dance floor but it was packed with people and that was crazy but really what it comes down to is it was nice to it was nice to be part of the celebration of people loving each other enough to deal with whatever drama there is and that that's kind of where the hopeless romantic part I used to think about oh my wedding's going to be cool I'm going to do this or whatever not that I sit around and think about my wedding all the time but I mean I'd be lying if I said I never thought about what I want at my wedding now I don't think I'll ever get married but um I used to think about it from time to time just mostly what kind of tuxedo I'd want and 
music, but because you, th- you I'd like to think about the music I want, and then you got to think about what everybody else that's going to be there. If you have a big wedding or a small wedding or whatever, but I never really got that into it. But it was really just nice to be part of their celebration um, with each other and their love for each other. And, you know, my breakup uh, just a few weeks ago um, wasn't terrible in my eyes. I was the one who ended it. And I have my reasons. won't get into it. And overall, as far as breakups go, I thought it was relatively smooth. I mean, we only dated for... I mean, it was barely a couple months, and I was basically gone for a lot of that because of work. But, you know, there's no such thing really as a truly clean breakup when somebody feels very strongly about the other. Um, Feelings always get hurt. That's just, it's very hard to avoid that. Um, So that's a bummer, but... I tried not to think about that, and it's not even about me. I ended the relationship, so it's not like I should be thinking about it. But it was, you know, it was nice to have this celebration. Um, And I didn't think about being alone while I was there. Uh, I've been to a lot of weddings, and a lot of the time, that's, that's what I ended up thinking about is, you know, I'm happy for the people that I'm there for, but I also get swallowed up in my own thoughts about my loneliness and I'm not lonely all the time but a wedding will definitely drag that feeling out of me from time to time not all the time but this is one of the few weddings where that happened like I didn't shut up email I didn't think about it at all I really didn't um I was just glad to be there I was glad to be out in a group of people doing things um having a good time people I haven't seen I haven't seen Jamie and her family in at least a year uh, since before my back got fucked up at the beginning of last year. So, and then COVID happened. So it's been at least a year and a half almost. And then some of those people I hadn't seen even longer than that, just because of work travel. And I missed some of their family gatherings because of that. So it was nice to be involved in the celebration for one, just seeing everybody. And it was nice to get away from the house In a non-work capacity, I did have to work for a couple hours from the hotel um, on Sunday. And then I had to work when I got home a little bit yesterday. But pretty sure somebody just dragged a coffin down the stairs in the hallway outside. But it was nice to be away in Summit County, uh, which is beautiful. If you're a skier and you've ever been to Keystone, Breckenridge, uh, Winter Park, any of those places... Um, in Colorado, it's beautiful up there. Even in the springtime, summertime, it rained a little bit uh, Sunday. Um, got a little bit chilly. I didn't mind. I loved it there. Uh, I would happily go up there frequently. Not so much in the winter time, just because I don't ski. I don't do the winter sport shit. You know, I'd go up there and chill. That's for sure. But that's about as far as I'd get. I'd really just die if I tried to go down the mountain. But that's that's what I did with my weekend. It was. Uh, Beautiful wedding ceremony, really, really good time with everybody. Um, Most of the bridesmaids, I think, were married, and that was that was a first. I don't think I'd been to very many weddings where all of the bridesmaids were either uh, married or otherwise involved. Um, In fact, I think most of the people that were there were not single. (laughs) I might have been one of the very, very few people, fewer than ten people, I think, that were single. At least ten people under fifty. Um, so that was, that was interesting, but it was, it was, it was good. I had a very good time. So Katie and Sean, I doubt you'll listen to this, but if you do, thank you for having me and congratulations on your wedding and your marriage. You know, you guys have been married since September technically, but thanks for having me. I love you both. You guys did a really good job planning it all out. Um, yeah. So That's my speech about my Memorial Day weekend. I hope yours was equally exciting and not uh, stressful in any way, shape, or form. And uh, yeah, I'm going to take a quick break and hydrate because I need to. So you've been listening to me ramble on for quite some time about this, that, and the other. So allow me to ramble on briefly about how I operate this podcast. There's lots of options for how you want to post and host your podcast and you put it out into the world. 
uh, I did a lot of research on mine, and for me, I decided to go with Anchor.fm. If you haven't heard of Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. First of all, it's free. That was a big selling point to me. Free is good. Uh, I like free. There's also tools for creation to help you record and edit your podcast from your phone or your computer or your tablet or whatever you're using. I find that to be effective. So we got free. We got uh, recording and editing. Both big deals uh, because they are. Anchor will also distribute your podcast for you. So it can be heard on Spotify. It could be heard on Apple Podcasts, it could be heard on Google Podcasts, and many, many more. That is a huge time saver because I don't have to go to each of those things to upload. So I like that distribution right then and there. And again, it's free. You can make money from your podcast, if you're into that kind of thing, with no minimum listenership. That could be cool. I think you should try it. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. So if you've been on the fence about making a podcast and the only thing holding you back is how you want to host it or create it or whatever, download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. It's worth it. All right, now that I've bored you to tears with my weekend, tell me about your weekend. What did you do this Memorial Day weekend? Did you barbecue? Did you work? Did you kill a man? Preferably not the latter. If you did, in fact, kill a man, I am a mandatory reporter. Actually, that's not true. I'm not a mandatory reporter anymore. However, I don't necessarily know that I could live with that on my conscience. So, or conscience. So, keep that in mind if you divulge that secret to me. I am not your attorney. I am not your religious figure. There is no uh, privilege there between the two of us. So, if you confide that into me, um, you may or may not be fucked. Anyway. Uh, what's new with you? I know that tours are coming back. I know that people are going to see movies in theaters. I did go see a couple, which I already talked about in a previous episode. Me and the now ex-girlfriend went and saw, um, Nobody, which was awesome. And I think that's on HBO now, HBO Max, maybe, or Amazon Prime. I don't remember what the fuck it's on, but it's fucking awesome. I need to buy it on Vudu, probably. Um... What else did we see? Oh, yeah, Mortal Kombat. I don't know that I'll buy that one. But I liked it the second time because I did see it twice. And the first time, I don't know. It had its moments. It's not great by any stretch, but I didn't hate it. Some people hated it. I didn't. Outside of that, I haven't watched any new movies. I did watch The Flight Attendant, which I think I talked about the last time. And I did love that. I thought that was really good, and I hope they do come out with another season. Um, I finally got around to watching The Righteous Gemstones on HBO Max, and that looked good when I first saw it come out. I think it's been like two years now, Um, but I finally got around to watching that, and I binged the fuck out of that. There were only nine episodes, and I fucking crushed that last week, like, or maybe it was just this weekend, actually, Um, between heavy drinking and partying for the wedding. Uh... Yeah, I it, that that was a great show. It's if you like Danny McBride, who I do, I do like Danny McBride a lot. If you know who I'm talking about, he's in Pineapple Express. He is in Eastbound and Down. Um, he's got all kinds. Uh, what is it? Principles. He's he writes a lot of these things, especially for HBO. It seems like, and they pick up all of that shit. HBO or Showtime. I don't remember which one has all of them, but HBO Max has. Uh, the Righteous Gemstones, and that, you know, it was funny, it was dark, but it was real, like, a lot of family stuff in there, which I didn't expect initially, um, kind of uplifting, I don't know if there'll be a second season of it, I kind of doubt it, it seemed to me, the way it ended, maybe it's not set up to be for another season, but, um, I liked it a lot, actually. I thought it was really, really good. Really well done. Check it out. New music. I haven't really... I bought a bunch of CDs a while ago, but those CDs have been out since last year and the year before. Not even going to talk about them. Except for the new Cannibal Corpse album. I haven't bought it yet, because every time I go to Angelo's to look for it, they don't have it, and I haven't bothered to order it. Um, I've listened to it a couple times just on Spotify. I dig it a lot. It's definitely got... A lot of uh, influence from uh, 
Eric Rutan. God, I totally almost forgot his fucking name. My brain is fried. Um, but definitely got a lot of his influence on it, which is awesome. Um, groovy. It's got a lot of groove to it. I, I fucking dig it. I dig it a lot. It doesn't hurt that having him produce their last five albums. Um, that definitely, you know, consistency in sound, I think. They all have a pretty solid, solid production value because, you know, if you change producers for every album, that's like a Legion. Legion just wrapped up album number six and they recorded this one with Dave Otero at Flatline again. And uh, Dave does an incredible work, incredible work. He's worked with uh, a lot of bands and a lot of uh, really, really well-known bands, especially in metal. Um, Chemis, I just bought, I think, their newest album. I'm not even a big fan of their music at all um, from what I've heard of it, but I saw it at Angelo's the last time I was there and I picked it up. And, uh, you know, I saw on the sleeve that actually had a sticker that they were Decibels, I think, album of the year winner. And I thought that was fucking awesome. And Dave, I've recorded two albums with Dave Otero. Uh, one when he had his studio in his mom's basement in Boulder and uh, at Hellion Studios. That was my first band, Misanthrope. We recorded their last-minute recording, and considering what we knew about recording and shit like that, and last minute in our ability to prepare, <laughs> and just our our general playing anyway, uh, I think it turned out really well. He did. He worked some miracles with us. It could have been better um, on our end, not on his end, but he's worked with Cattle Decapitation, all kind, Arch Spire, fucking hell. Just really good bands that he works with. And he, he's done a shit ton of stuff. And he's amazing. Um, Allegion just wrapped up album number six. They've recorded all of their albums except for the second one. The second full-length studio album that they did. Which I can never remember if that's uh, which one that one actually is. And naturally, because I don't have my fucking notes in front of me, that doesn't help. But uh, they recorded that one with the dude in California. Can't remember his name either. So, but yeah, having a consistent producer uh, on your records probably helps immensely. Just ask, you know, some of the classic bands like Metallica. And I'm sure they will confirm that because your producer will know how you guys operate, how you guys play, how you guys write, what what the whole process is. And the band will know that producer's process. And, you know, it's basically having another member of the band, essentially the way I've always thought about it. Fear Factory back in the day, the older Fear Factory, the first three albums really. Um, even though there's a drastic difference between Soul of a New Machine and Demanufacture, and even even uh, Obsolete, pretty significant difference between the feel of Demanufacture and Obsolete. But uh, yeah, basically the same producers for all three of those, and I think Digimortal might have had the same producer, but they went quite a bit different for that one which I haven't really listened to their um, their latest creation. I listened to the single that they put out a few weeks ago, and I don't know if I'm into it. Fear Factory is probably my favorite band, if I had to pick one. And um, they've been a bit hit or miss for the last 20 years, in my opinion. And that kind of hinges on who's in the band. And Archetype, I really, really liked. Dino wasn't in the band. Dino came back, and I'm not sure how much I like the stuff since he came back. Loved the shit he did for Divine Heresy. Um, hang on, I gotta move the fucking cat. She's needy all of a sudden. Sorry, baby. Um, but the track, I only listened to the one of the two tracks they put out recently. And it almost... It almost sounds cheesy to me, and I don't know if it's just my brain trying to deal with the fact that even though Burton C. Bell is on the vocals for it, uh, he won't be after this album. Like it's the, They're still using his vocals for this album, his vocals, his lyrics, but he's done. He's quit Fear Factory after 30 years, and uh, that hurts my heart because when I first started doing... Um, the metal vocals, I guess. He was basically who I was trying to emulate, kind of. It was kind of a hybrid between him and Chris Barnes um, 
and Glenn Benton. It was kind of a mix of those three things. Uh, that's, I don't know how to describe it. That's, he was kind of my inspiration. Just, yeah, I don't know. It's just weird. So I don't know if his departure it was giving me a preconceived notion about how I was going to enjoy the new music. So when the album comes out, I'm sure I'm going to buy it. Um, probably take a few spins of it before I can really decide whether or not I like it, but we'll see. So that's what I've been doing with my life. I got to figure out what I'm going to do uh, now that stuff's opening back up. Slam Dakota Death Festival is, uh, I think it's at the end of June or maybe July. I cannot remember. Um, Angelic Desolation's plan. I know they got a bunch of fucking bands on there. I'm not going to be able to go, but it does look like it'll be a kick-ass time. Slam Dakota. Slam Dakota Death Fest, I think is what it's called. Uh, look it up. If you're a brutal death metal person or even just a, you know, semi-brutal death metal person, really, if you're just into death metal, probably worth checking out. Um, I'm assuming it'll still go through. Everything seems to be uh, normalizing, I guess is the word. People are getting their Microsoft NWO injections and uh, doing the damn thing, trying to get the world back into a functional space. And that's cool. Um, I'm, I'm with that. And hopefully we can maintain that track and get things relatively stable again. What would really be nice, and I don't mean this in a horrible kind of way, is if the housing market, at least here in Colorado in the Denver area, could just crash just a little bit. Just enough that so once again, I can actually qualify on my income for a reasonable mortgage. And also to have that mortgage buy me a reasonable house without having to destroy the whole thing and rebuild it from scratch because that's basically where I am with my current salary. Unless I win Powerball or something. So speaking of which, if you are looking to buy a home, um, my dad and my stepmom, they just moved to Windsor, Colorado and their house in the quote unquote good part of Commerce City off 104th and Chambers uh, is up for sale. It's been on the market for maybe four days now, I think. Um, 104th and Chambers, it was built 2005-ish, I think. I didn't look. Uh, I love that house. If I had the money to buy that house, I would buy it right the fuck right now just because I like that house so much. Um, It's bigger than what one person and a cat would need, but I would rock the fuck out of that house. It's I I truly would buy that house if I could afford it. Um, Hit me up. Just find me. If you know if you know who I am, if you know where I am, hit me up. And if you don't, here's where I am. I am on Twitter, at Death Disco Pod. I am on Instagram, at Death Metal Disco. Or maybe it's at Death Metal Disco Pod. I really should fucking write this down. I'm on Facebook, the Death Metal Disco Podcast. I am on my website, www.cummingsvo.com. Uh, if you want to contact me there because you hate social media, that's perfectly okay too. It's got a contact page on there. has nothing to do with the podcast, although there is a link to the podcast where you can actually listen to the podcast on there if you so choose. Speaking of other places you can listen to the podcast, you can always listen to the podcast on Spotify. You can listen to it on Anchor.fm. You can listen to it on iTunes or Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts or, well, there's like, other podcast platforms, and I can't think of all the names of them, but if you know of a podcast platform and you want to hear the Death Metal Disco podcast on that platform and it's not fucking there, hit me up. Find me. I'll make sure that happens. Um, I appreciate you guys listening to me, do my thing. I'm going to try and whip up some commercials for other podcasts um, that I support uh, because they're awesome. Um, I don't get a chance to listen to a lot of podcasts, but uh, the ones that I do... Uh, I, I want to promote to my millions of audience members and they deserve, they deserve shout outs. So I'm going to whip up some commercialist stuff for them and, uh, see if I can knock that out sometime soon. Don't expect that in a rapid sense at all, but just know that I'm going to, so you might see me start spamming on social media cause I got to step my social media game up. 
I fucking suck at the social media stuff. It's just a lot. And I'm not going to hire an assistant. And the cat doesn't have thumbs, so it is what it is. Anyway, I appreciate you guys listening to me do my thing. I am going to record another episode later this week, so I'll have one for next week. I'm not going to deprive you (laughs) of that. I'm not going to deprive myself of this free therapy because that's what I'm doing is just talking to you people, getting it out of my system. Yeah. And maybe for that episode, I'll decide to drink because my friend DJ and I swapped a couple bottles of alcohol. I bought a bottle of uh, Old Forester 1920. Prohibition style, 115 proof bourbon. That shit was good. That shit was strong. And ended up, I wanted to bring it and leave it at their house a uh, weekend before last for the little barbecue they had. And I did. In exchange, he gave me a bottle of Blue Note. Um, I don't have it sitting in front of me, but that stuff's delicious too. So, Blue Note. Yeah, just mmm, whiskey. I probably drank too much this weekend, but hmm. I should really, really invest in drinking some more at home. I just never do. Anyway, drink responsibly. Enjoy your summertime, which I know it's not officially summer, but Memorial Day, the unofficial start of summer in Colorado. So keep up the good work doing whatever you're doing. Unless uh, whatever you're doing is bad, then stop. Pull your head out of your ass. Hug your neighbor if uh, they let you because consent is everything. I love you all. Uh, Most of you, uh, platonically, some of you, sexually, you know the drill. Keep it safe and be good to each other.